for the purpose of our continuous voters registration, we have done 376,616. And also, Your Excellency, during this period, it is not just fresh registration that we do. We are able to transfer from one town to the other, from one local government to the other, from one state to the other. So far, we have transferred total number of 20,161. And also, for people who have lost their PVC, whose PVCs have been defaced, we have also done 20,744. We have distributed so far the total number of 37,035 PVCs. But unfortunately, we have a huge number of 756,450 PVCs uncollected in New York State. And that's where we're keeping our focus now as we uh, look at uh, INEC and its role ahead of the 2019 general elections. We're being joined from our Abuja studios by Dr. Sam Amadi, a lecturer at Beige University. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us, as well as Dr. Okoye Ikechiku, the Executive Director, Development Specs Academy, and also a columnist. Thank you so much indeed both for joining us. Let's begin with you, Dr. Ikechiku. Uh, you have been watching uh, what's been playing out looking from the point at which Mr. President uh, declined signing the uh, Electoral Act Amendment Bill. And now we're hearing reports of INEC being under intense pressure not to do two things, which is to display the results of the voters at the polling units and also the electrical, uh, sorry, electronic transmission of results Electron. to INEC servers. What is going on? Well, I wouldn't know what exactly is going. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't know what exactly is going on. But what I see is um, what you might call the last-minute moves by interested political actors to ensure that their interests and not necessarily that of the nation is protected. Uh, the president's refusal to sign the bill sends signals suggesting that um, if you look at the specific provisions, which uh, would appear to be what he is unwilling to sign, he sent out the signal that. The, the, the presidency of the government is not sufficiently interested in a transparent election and the electoral process. And, and so that is on the table. Then the second thing is that if INEC is under intense pressure to do what is being suggested, it also means that the, the, the octave of desperation has moved up. So what I see is a government in power that is determined not to go, which is understandable. Nobody likes to be pushed out. But also an opposition that needs to articulate better and the National Assembly that perhaps has done all it could, but may want to consider other lines of action. What is simply going on, back to your question, is that these are the antics to be expected in an election like this, within the circumstance in which we find ourselves. And also against the background that the PDP opposition, as far as its ongoing election is anything to go by, is also incoherent in a manner of speaking. So this is politics, and we, we, we yeah. So we see how, how that plays out. You, you say the opposition is incoherent in the matter of speaking. Could you explain some more? Okay, if you take the PDP is the major opposition, in my view. And um, if you look at, it came out with a policy document, or what is described as a policy document, which is perhaps not just a wish list, but statements of good intention. And for a former president, a vice president, a little less than one would have expected, because... Yeah, it's a policy document, an article policy document or a PDP policy document, in line with the manifesto or not, in line with the economic history. You're promising us 100% new jobs. Are you aware that 60% has gone, in which case you produce, you, you promise 160? So it's at that level, we, given that document, I found it a little demoralizing because they pretend and insist that it's a policy document. The second thing is that if you look at the composition of the PDP campaign council, it's structured not to work. The bulk of the members are people with ongoing political battles, and they can't leave that to come and have a headache over the presidential elections. There are funding challenges. 
their, their stakeholder issues. And the campaign kicked off uh, about a month ago, I think. What is it that has happened? Beyond the fact that they appeared in some big cities, do you get the ferment you see? Is it not the same PDP that back then had three campaign trains, one headed by uh, Audubwe, another by Atiku, another by Obasanjo in different parts of the country? Do you get a sense of a group preparing to take over from a desperately entrenched government? The answer, in my view, is no. Of course, you have press releases, more frequent than at any other time in the history of the PDP, from the, I think, the national press, the press, the secretary of the party. All those things, my question is who is reading them? They are reactive. They are talking about things the government is doing badly. For an opposition party struggling to take over, it lacks an ideologue. It doesn't have any narrative. Uh, if I may just come Buhari in. took over in 2015 because there was a clear narrative that placed, stigmatized actually, the, the incumbent government at the time. What's the argument today articulated and driven? Do Dr. General Dr. Perception Dr. Gechuku, of incompetence, Dr. Gechuku, corruption, if, if and If you just allow me to come in here, perception. even though uh, oh, we know that um, uh, there has been, uh, people are reading this. I mean, it's out there in the public domain. So... Uh, a lot of people will be reading about everything that's coming out from both parties. But let me get your thoughts, uh, Dr. Sam Amadi. In the light of what INEX says, and perhaps it is under pressure, perhaps it is not under pressure, but if you look at the Electoral, Amendment, uh, Ele Electoral Act Amendment Bill that's not been signed by Mr. President, it gives a lot of people a lot of concerns. Because if we say that INEX should not display the names of the candidates, uh, I'm sorry, the names of the voters at the polling units and also the electronic transmission of results to INEX servers. What does that mean for you? Well, first, uh, let me step back and say uh, the president exercises power of veto, presidential veto. The design of the constitution, of, the, of governance by the constitution is that there's a competition for power between branches, what they call inter-branch competition. And so a president exercises his power to, in this case perhaps, uh, further his own interests and then of 